Yo, 95% Rookie here, and today we're going to be doing another tutorial. I'm going to try to not be lazy today and actually edit the video a bit more into a more concise format compared to my previous tutorials. Anyway, what we'll be doing today is making from scratch a moderately complex, low-scale single-player or co-op mission. This is a mission you can either play in single-player or with a small group of friends, rather than a full operation that I'm usually working on. There are many ways to do this, but maybe this one will give you some ideas. Or if you're a complete beginner, you might learn some stuff. The mission will also be fully playable on the Steam Workshop if you want to check it out uh, after I upload this. Hopefully the link should be in the description. As far as mods go, my goal for this is we'll be using as few as possible so you don't have to have a ton of dependencies. However, I do have a few which I find are basically must-haves for making missions, at least in this context. First is Lamb's AI, uh, which is basically, it adds a lot of functionality to the AI of Arma 3, including some very nice modules, which can be used for mission making. Second is Threeden, which is basically adds a lot of functionality to the Arma 3 Eden editor. Um, we also have Zeus Enhanced, which is great for Zeus missions and stuff, but it's also really good for troubleshooting when you're using Zeus to troubleshoot, uh, which we do a lot. Next is Deformer, which I didn't actually end up using in this mission, but still very useful. I think you should probably use it for your missions when using uh, needing to flatten terrain or whatever. Then Spider Add-ons. It's basically a smaller mod with a few neat little functions. The main one that's important here is the recruitment feature. And finally, we have a full suite of Drongo's mods. Uh, the main two are Drongo's map population and Drongo's artillery. Although I didn't end up using map population, it's still a very good mod. Um, and generally, it's a uh, must-have for me. One thing to keep in mind in this video that due to some recording issues, some stuff might be cut out of order or might miss an aspect to a step in the process. If you're wondering why something isn't working or have any questions, feel free to post a comment and I'll try to get to it. To start with, the overall objective of the mission is that you are an AAF patrol starting at a base and moving in the area to complete various objectives as they progress. First off, I'm going to place the player fire team down at the outpost that I plan to use and set them all as playable. One thing to keep in mind is that this mission should be played in multiplayer, even if you are by yourself so that all the respawn functions work. I also change the squad to Bravo 1 2. And if you type at Bravo 1 2 at the end in the role description with CBA installed, the group name will change in the multiplayer screen as well, which is very useful. Uh, I save the mission to my default Arma 3 mission location, which will be important because you'll be adding some files to the mission folder down the line. Not exactly crucial, but I'm adding a small flag to the truck I'm designated as a spawn truck for the AF, just to denote it as different. This is done using the attach to command as shown. I also add some extra gear to the truck and add some more various AAF vehicles to the outpost for general transport. I add a marker to denote the outpost name and name it Respawn Gorilla, so it acts as our primary spawn location. Now in the mission folder, I add the following code to a file called initserver.sqf in notepad, which will add a respawn position to the respawn truck as long as it is named AAF truck. There's also some code in here for the difficulty script I use. Uh, the mission sh file should be available in the description. Within the description ext file, which is in the mission folder, which you will have to create, I put a uh, respawn on start minus one and enable debug console one so that you will start in the mission and you don't go into the respawn menu and you can use the debug console mid mission if needed. In the multiplayer dropdown menu, I then disable the AI teammates box, which if you need a teammate, you'll be able to recruit them later on, just shouldn't be using the ones that are within the actual um, mission that I place. I also set the respawn mode to custom position and turn on select respawn position, show respawn counter, respawn in wave, and spectator. I also set the respawn delay to 30 seconds. Quickly test to make sure everything's set up and everything should be good. You might have to do quite a lot of troubleshooting for missions like this just due to the amount of scripting and stuff, but uh, that just kind of comes with the job. Next up, I set up an arsenal with all the gear the players might need using an AAF cargo net along with some extra stuff. Arsenals are pretty easy to set up with 3 in. I place a flag and I drag some other code over, which essentially adds an action that will send the player using the action to the spawn truck. This is so if someone joins late or spawns at base, they can transport themselves back to the squad. I also set up the spider add-ons recruitment module, which is pretty simple to set up, but just set the parameters and sync it to the flag. And then to get the class names for the units, I spawn the units I want, copy the logs, uh, the class names from the log, and then I uh, paste it into the whitelist with commas. All right, I placed down a few extra soldiers to give the base some defenses and flavor. Then I also had two mortars and named their group Medusa Mortars. These will be able to be called in by the player using Drongo's artillery, which you can look up yourself how to use. But essentially, when you use a keybind, you'll be able to open the artillery menu to call it in. And I set a uh, restrict users module, which and set it to sergeant, so only sergeant rank 
uh, players will be able to call in artillery. For the first objective, I want it to be a small camp with not too many enemies, so I set that up, place down a create task module, and fill out the objectives as shown. I also place down some markers. Uh, I place down a trigger, and I keep in mind that for missions involving uh, tasks, you're going to want the triggers to be set to server only. Triggers are pretty simple in that if you set the condition of the trigger, in this case, the player walks into the camp area, uh, it will activate, and then the set task module state uh, sync to the trigger will then set the objective state of the create task to whatever that is. So essentially the player walks into the camp, uh, the trigger activates the set task uh, successful to that task. And then if I have another one, which I'm gonna set a second one, which I create task for objective two, when the trigger activates and that sync to it, it will then create a new task at the location of that task module. And essentially once the players dis discover the camp, they'll get intel that the next camp is, or the uh, FIA cache nearby needs to be destroyed. I also set up an FIA technical patrolling the road and I sync its first waypoint to the trigger, which will mean it won't go past that first waypoint until the trigger activates and then it will begin its patrol. Um, the second objective I set up with some enemies and stuff and then I set up the caches, which I name and then set up the trigger with the following code, which will show um, when the when it detects these, these boxes are no longer alive, it will set the uh, next task uh, and it will set the task to successful. Um, so the next task will be objective three, and that will be return to base and rearm and refit. As a kind of a side thing, I set up an ambush, uh, between the cache and the base. And the way this is set up, it's kind of complicated, but basically, um, I have a trigger set up that will make it so that all of these units are invisible and not simulated. And then once the caches are destroyed, they will become visible and start operating. And then when players drive near the IED set on the road, it will detonate in sequence and then the AI will engage. So it's kind of basically just a, an, an ambush position. If you want to see how specifically I set up these uh, commands, which is basically just to disable and enable um, AI and simulation, you can see in the... Uh, the mission file but i won't go over the whole thing just because it'll take a while next for after they return to base they'll get a task to wait around for a new objective and after that i set uh a command using the lambs ai wiki which has a lot of functionality and stuff but basically it will add the nearby uh fia mortar to the artillery register which will mean that they can be used to uh call an artillery for the fia and i then also set up a a uh, task which is artillery which will have that mortar launch artillery on top of uh the aaf outpost so uh yeah you can look up how to use these these code snippets and stuff from the lambs ai wiki it's actually pretty useful along with this i have blue four units uh, fi units placed nearby which are going to be invisible and not simulated so players can't stumble upon them accidentally uh once the uh defend the base task comes on the trigger will set it so that these units are then simulated and visible again so they'll begin their attack on the base i then have another trigger set up which is covering the area where those units are which is blue four present so when or a blue for not present rather. So when the FIA are all killed or retreat, then the trigger will activate and they'll be the defense mission will be considered a success. For the final objective, I set up an FIA base to the south. Essentially, the FIA were spotted retreating back to this base by uh, AAF uh, recon. And then so for this one, it's basically pretty simple. We'll just have a bunch of patrolling units and garrisoned units and vehicles and stuff. And then we're gonna have some units to the south, which will move into the north. And they'll these guys are kind of on patrol. And when blue four units or uh, when, sorry, when AAF units are nearby to the, uh, the base, then these guys will move in from the south to the north and start helping their base essentially. Then when all units are destroyed in the area, blue four units, then the mission will be considered a success. I also set up some minefields in the hills surrounding the area just so it's a little harder to get a drop on this uh, position. The FIA have set up minefields to kind of protect their above. I also set up some small set pieces in a house to give the area a bit more flavor than just uh, guys sitting in buildings. You, By the way, you can use the disable AI path command to stop them from being able to move. And then you can also set the uh, uh, set unit pause middle or up to kind of make them standing or crouching or whatever. And then now we have the final touches of the mission, basically just kind of extra stuff to make it more complete. Um, in the init.sqf file in the mission folder, I'm going to place some diary entry scripts, 
uh, scripts, which you can find more about of the command for in uh, the Bohemia Interactive Wiki um, for Arma 3, which is a very useful resource for mission making in general. But essentially, you could just copy what I put in the mission file, but essentially you just are able to enter in, you know, entries for situation, mission, objective, stuff like that, uh, just to give the, the start of the mission some more context. I then draw an image in Clip Studio Paint, uh, and then that'll be my loading image and my uh, the workshop image, uh, which will then, it's in 1024 by 512 dimensions for the in-game uh, image, and I s call it loading.jpg, and then I set it up in the images folder, in the mission folder, and then I draw that path in the general uh, menu, which will then, you know, basically when I enter that image, it'll it'll be then the loading screen and stuff. I also make sure to set the AAF and Blue 4 to hostile in that menu. And I set a description for the mission. I decide I'm going to make some mission dialogue to spice the mission up a little bit. To do this, I basically record the audio in Audacity and add some radio effects. Tutorials are found on YouTube, which will show you how to do the radio beep and, you know, radio sound effect and stuff. I then export them as OGG files to my mission folder, uh, the sound folder. Uh, they have to be OGG files for this to work, basically. And then configure them in the description.ext using the config sounds, uh, which you can either copy from my file or you can lo learn more about that description.ext stuff in uh, the Bohemia wiki. But basically it just tells the game how to find those sounds. Then I have to make scripts to call, which will, you know, make these sounds actually play in game. And I call these radio talk one, two, three, and I make them SQF scripts. So dot uh, SQF and I put them in the scripts folder. Then I have to make triggers, which will activate them. And I kind of have a certain way of doing this. And by the way, anyone watching this who actually knows scripting and locality and stuff, there's definitely a lot of weird things, how I do stuff with the remote exec and exec VM and stuff. I kind of knew about it more before. I've kind of forgotten some of that. So if if, it's, if you're thinking it's weird, like why is using remote exec in this way or whatever, I basically do that because it's worked in the past and I have the triggers saved. So I know it works on a dedicated server and it works. So yeah, I didn't really look into it more than that. Um, probably not good advice for me. You should probably be looking into this stuff and how locality and stuff actually works. It's pretty important. But regardless, it should just work. So yeah. Uh, anyways, in the radio talk.sqf folder or... Uh, sorry, the script. It actually, this is this is what's in it, and essentially, it is two things. It is one is a command which will play the sound, which is the radio dialogue, and then two, it will have some text using the side chat command. And the way this works is whatever unit is labeled there, in this case Z1, that will be the unit that is saying it over the radio. And in this case, I have a unit called Z1, and I have that unit's group name set to uh, Javelin Actual. So that's the commanding officer. And if everything's worked, uh, set up. Right, then you should see it play like so. Bravo 2, this is Javelin Actual. Proceed to the recomposition to your north. Out. And then I decide to make a final mission end script, which will work similarly. Um, but in this case, we have uh, a victory uh, music playing, which will be uh, a setup in the description EXT in the config music, which is, you know, similar to config sound. You can look that up on the wiki. I'm not going to explain everything. Um, and then uh, with, once that's set up with it, with the victory.sqf, um, I'm going to have first, yeah, plays the music. And then we're going to have some text play, show, which will be like, you know, the AAF F1 or whatever, using the, uh, the title command. Um, and then the title will fade and then it'll end the mission at the end. But yeah, feel free to ask any questions in the comments or whatever, or even if you want to contact me through DMs or whatever, if you can. Track that down. My name's uh, Ivory State on Discord and stuff. If you want to DM me questions about mission making, whatever, I'm always open to help people with that stuff. Uh, you can also ask on the Arma Wiki and Reddit. It's always there's lots of resources out there for helping mission making. But yeah. Now, assuming my testing and everything goes well, which I plan to test the mission in multiplayer soon before I release this video, there should be nothing else after this. If there is something else after this, that means something went wrong and I had to post facto come back and edit the video to uh, make sure everything's good. But everything should be good. The mission should run. It should all work. I've tested it in single player. It's all good. Um, and then, yeah, that's how you make a single player, simple, small co-op mission. Um, you know, you can play this yourself or you can play it with friends. It's kind of a open, open uh, way to play it. Anyways, uh, this has been 95% Rookie. Sorry for the lack of videos lately, but uh, life's been kind of hectic. Anyways, uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. See ya.